I'm always surprised when I pick up a fantasy novel and there isn't a map in it. I think most fantasy novels have fantasy maps. It's such a key genre trope to understanding fantasy. The most well-known fantasy maps are likely the map from Lord of the Rings, as well as the opening intro map in Game of Thrones, which are both amazing. Because fantasy maps are awesome, and why not, I'm gonna make my own fantasy map. As you may have seen in a previous video, I am now a dungeon master and running Dungeons & Dragons campaigns, and it feels integral for me to have a fantasy map for the world that I'm building with the players. So during our first session, I drew a blob on a large piece of paper and asked players to add a spot on the map with an evocative name that would be their point of origin, where their characters are from. Um, people added spots pretty random places on this map, which is great. Everyone's from very different parts of this world. So with that information, I'm going to create a digital version of that map and I'm going to populate it with a bunch of stuff. There is actually a book called uh, Fantasy Art and RPG Maps by Jared Blando, and I'm going to follow a bunch of the recipes in this book. They look pretty good. I haven't gotten a chance to go through everything in the book, but I feel like it's something we can just do. We can go through it and make the map. So the only other thing to mention about the, my process here is I'm going to be using a Wacom tablet. I bought a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro uh, a couple of years back, and uh, I would love to do this as a digital art project, in part because uh, it's easy to erase. <laughs> Also, the finished product will look cool. And you know, if there's ever a book series, I've already made the map and uh, it won't be <laughs> some weird photocopy of the thing. It will already be done, which would be great. So let's get started creating a fantasy map. And I'm saying let's, even though it's just me. I'm going to get started. I'm struggling with um, how I'm gonna get this uh, Wacom tablet to actually um, share the screen in a way that I can record that makes sense. I mean, there'll be a way, it's just, will it be today? I should have tried to do this a while ago. <laughs> okay, so as far as the size of this thing, so we're I'm gonna do this in Photoshop. I know I want to put it on a piece of paper. So eight and a half by 11 is a standard piece of paper. So this size makes sense to me in terms of the general size. Cool, so then we have a good general outline. All right, so now the book is suggesting creating inlets and bays uh, to make the coastline unique. I don't wanna be somebody that doesn't know what inlets uh, and bays are, but now that I have to draw them, I'm a little bit confused about what these are supposed to look like. It looks like creating inlets like, like little wedges and half moon shapes within the space. So um, yeah, I'll, get, I'll create a few of those and see how that looks. Adding inlets and bays is an awesome idea. Very cool looking. I'm just gonna draw a line here and this is where the mountains are gonna go roughly in this direction. All right, the next step is to add some details to the mountains. These are just gonna be simple lines. Yeah, that looks great. Now I'm gonna add just a little volcano over here while I'm doing mountains. All right, so now we're gonna add just hills all around the mountain and then use that same step. We're adding simple details just like the mountains. I like the look of that. So now, this is kind of neat. The suggestion here is to add doors and tombs. So yes, we're definitely gonna do that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I like that, it adds a lot of mystery. It's like when you see those little fairy doors on trees around Portland. So the next book suggestion here is to possibly add an alternate peak. So I'm gonna redraw this mountain here to see if I can make it look a little more interesting. I'm not sure if I succeeded. So the next step is forests and the way these work, you start with an outline and then you start adding trees within that outline. So we'll do the outlines. I want forests in two places. 
and then we're going to add the trees. This is just showing me how, how infrequently I draw trees because I'm like, oh, the tree shape, you know, the V, the, um, the V shape. There you go, there's the V. All right, after this, we're gonna add some rivers. So I want to have some rivers that go into the main sea and ocean here. You know, sometimes I feel like an artist, but sometimes it's just fun to have a recipe to follow, you know, when there is a recipe. So next up, I'm adding shorelines, which are gonna go all the way around the outline and clearly differentiate between the land part and the water part. So there are gonna be two layers of shorelines. And you see this on every map and it totally makes sense to add. It's just going to be a little tedious. All right, and then next up, ocean lines. These are gonna be little lines that go from the shorelines out that are gonna show where the ocean begins. Okay, so I have a scratch disk, our full error, so I need to stop and figure out how to deal with that, and then I can come back to this project because uh, Adobe. Ah. All right, deleted some things, and it's a day later, and more ocean lines. Now, finally, the thing that you thought I was gonna be doing first, drawing tiny landmarks and monuments. So first up, I'm gonna draw a little wizard's tower. And for the typography, I'm just going to trace some cool looking letters. This is a technique that I learned from Carson Ellis when she was building out the tarot style cards for Illimat. Very cool technique. And you're gonna see this technique a lot because I'm gonna use it for every single location. <laughs> Next up, pyramids, because I wanna do an Egyptian inspired adventure at some point. So next up is the haunted forest. I'm going to erase and then also redraw the trees a little bit so it doesn't look terrible. This is a cool suggestion in the book to add troll cairns and I, yes, I want a troll town. Next, I'm gonna add names to all of the water regions and the islands. There might be better order, but I'm gonna add some map features now. I'm gonna add a compass. And I want to add one of those vintage sea monsters that you see in maps sometimes. One of my favorite mysteries of all time is Stonehenge. So I definitely need to add a little henge action. Maybe it's a portal to another world. No role-playing game would be complete without a dragon, so I'm definitely adding a dragon's lair. And this is a great art suggestion from in the book. All right, and now we just need to add a few little towns. And then another little town over here with some ruins. These are the chaos ruins. And then I want to add an underground fort that was destroyed. This is straight from Dungeons and Dragons. It's called the Sunless Citadel, but I will call it the Sunken Citadel. And now I want to add a larger city feature that's going to have some cool underground dungeons. So I'm going to call this one the Deep. And now I'm going to add a few paths here and there.
I love it when you get to see large statues of ancient gods and heroes, so I'm going to add a large monument here. One Stonehenge isn't enough for me. I want to add another mysterious rock formation here. This is going to be a little bit more figurative than some of the other illustrations, but I'm going to add a little battlefield here. Well, I have some mountains already, I would like to add some more dedicated dwarven structures so I can use some of the dwarven campaign ideas I have. Overall, things just seem a little underpopulated, so I just want to add a couple more castles and structures to explore. The next step here is to add a border. So I'm actually drawing on the tablet with a straight edge right now to create these two lines for the border. And then on the corners, I want to add these glyph-like edges to really call out the corners. And then I just want to add some lines here to call out the fact that these are borders. And finally, what do we name this place? I actually didn't think this part through, but I like the name Finn in part because it implies the end, which is exciting, but also an homage to the Finn character in Adventure Time. All right, that's the finished map. I've included links to a PSD file if you want to take a look at it, as well as a printable download if you want to print out a copy of this map for your own record keeping, you crazy person. The final map came out really well. People really appreciated receiving it, though uh, I think it would be really cool to do a version of this in color, though I did go off book a few times to make my own stuff, and the stuff that I made on my own, it felt like it was a little bit weird, like it wasn't as iconic looking as the content that was suggested in the book. It's very challenging to make a thing that you can look at as a miniature illustration and immediately kind of pick up what it is. So I really appreciate the unique challenge of creating iconic kind of illustrations. So I'll definitely be on the lookout now for representation as I look at more maps and think about how I can make improvements on this in the future. There were definitely some serious challenges working with Adobe Photoshop that I didn't anticipate in putting this project together, though that's on me to learn more about how Adobe Photoshop thinks about projects. Not how I think, how Adobe thinks. If you were to get this book and create your own fantasy map, there's a lot of stuff in here that I didn't get into at all, like factions and of course doing something in color. And there's a ton of different little suggestions that I didn't pick up on that I think are great. I think the core stuff of building an outline and then working for the basic features first makes a lot of sense, as opposed to getting into the details of drawing specific towns, cities, buildings, etc. Though there is no right answer for how to do this, this is just a like conceptual framework for creating your own kinds of content. But that, that makes sense to me for the future, and that really helps as far as how I might go about the next project. If you have suggestions for the kind of maps you would make, or things that you think would be cool to see as maps, go ahead and make those in the comments. I had a particular interest in making a fantasy map, and it turns out there is a recipe for that, and there's probably a recipe for every other kind of map that you'd want to make. My name is Michael, I'm a designer and a professional hobbyist. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. I make new videos every week about things that I'm interested in. All right, thanks so much.